Okay, so we can start the second part of this session, and um, and we will listen now uh, by uh, Xavier Kurs, who is uh, the coordinator uh, from uh, European Medicine Agency of the project uh, PROTECT, uh, Pharmacoepidemiological Research on Outcomes of Therapeutic by European Consortium. Um, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, this uh, safety project is a bit special because, for two reasons. First of all, because it concerns post-authorization, post-marketing surveillance. Uh, therefore, it's a bit different from the other projects. And also because this is the, the only uh, IMI project that is coordinated by a regulatory agency, the European Medicines Agency. And uh, why did we embark on this, in this project? And uh, why did we uh, look for all these complications? First of all, because we thought that this uh, benefit-risk uh, monitoring project is really in the, uh, it is our core business, actually. The, uh, uh, the, the mandate of the European Medicine Agency includes the post-authorization safe benefit risk monitoring of authorized vaccines. And therefore, this uh, project was uh, really in uh, our mandate. And we thought that uh, through this project, we could also uh, contribute to uh, significantly improve the methodologies and uh, uh, the tools that are being used uh, in the surveillance of uh, products uh, after the authorization. So I have two slides of... Uh, background which are a bit simple. Uh, they have been prepared for the press conference actually. Uh, so at the time of authorization of medicines, information is most often lacking on, uh, on adverse reactions because, uh, and especially on adverse reactions that, co that occur with a low frequency after a long delay and in specific population groups such as pregnant women or patients with screening disease and because uh, clinical trials carried out during drug development have a selected population, often include limited number of patients and have a limited duration. So uh, information on the safety of medicines need to be collected uh, after the marketing of the, uh, the medicines and the need, this information needs to be analyzed quickly as soon as the product is launched on the market. So this process is called pharmacovigilance and it includes some uh, basic activities. First of all, a collection and compilation of data on adverse drug reactions and it is mainly done through the spontaneous reporting system by healthcare professionals and patients in some countries. Uh, then we need to carry out a prompt detection of new safety issues, what we call signals, and to evaluate the signals in observational studies or clinical trials these observational studies are called also pharmacoepidemiological studies because they use methodologies of, the, of epidemiology and, and biostatistics. And based on this information, uh, regulators need to uh, constantly reevaluate the benefit risk of medicines. Now, in each of these uh, activities, there are a number of uh, needs. And, uh, and what are these needs? First of all, for data collection, we need an efficient and simple methods for early data collection directly from patients. There are many examples where we would really like to have uh, information quickly from patients as soon as they start uh, taking a drug, for example, pregnant women, in case of advanced uh, therapies, in case, in case of orphan drugs, uh, in case of vaccines, and we had an uh, example recently with the H1N1 vaccines and uh, surveillance of pregnant women. We need also, uh, to, we have to be able to collect data on non-prescribed medicines, and also we would like to link this uh, information on the safety of medicines on outcomes and on uh, medical history, and that is why we would like to be able to link this information to health event database. As regards signal detection and especially spontaneous report, we uh, need in-depth analysis of the methods that are available and, uh, and good practice recommendations. Although spontaneous reports are, now the, are still the uh, main source of information for safety of the drugs once they are marketed, there is no consensus on uh, what, are, what are the best methods, how the database should be handled, how they should be uh, screened, 
And so we really need um, an in-depth analysis of the, the methods and uh, recommendations. We would like also to make better use of electronic health care records and clinical trials, so not waiting until the end of the studies and until the end of the clinical trials to know what is the safety of the product. The, for, as regards signal evaluation, um, there are also many examples where uh, a same safety issue has been uh, studied by different investigators in different databases, or even by different investigators in the same database, and there are different results. Sometimes the results are very different, and uh, it's very difficult to know what is the true effect of the drug uh, on uh, adverse reactions. Um, and we really need to know and to understand the variability in the results of studies uh, on this safety issue that are uh, used in different data sources. And we need also detailed guidance and standards regarding the design, conduct, and analysis of pharmacoepidemiological studies. I would like to make here a comparison with clinical trials. In clinical trials, uh, there are very strict rules and guidelines, and when these rules are not followed, either the protocol is not accepted by ethical committees or by scientific review boards, uh, or the results are not accepted or are not published. This is not the case in observational studies and pharmacoepidemiological studies. So there is still a very large variability in the quality of the studies and in the, the validity of the results, and this is something that we would like to address. Now for benefit risk assessment, there is also a need for widely accepted method for integrating the data from various data sources. Not only data from clinical trials, but also uh, data from uh, observational studies, spontaneous reports, and, uh, and therefore based on this integration of data to assess an overall benefit risk and to be able to follow this benefit risk uh, uh, over the lifetime of the, the product, the life cycle of the product. Uh, and at this stage, there are already some projects that are working on this, but they are only taken the point, taking the point of view of the regulators. And we would like to uh, assess on how we could uh, use and integrate the, um, the, the patient's preference and also the prescriber's preference into this benefit risk uh, assessment. So the, the main goal is to uh, strengthen the monitoring of benefit risk of medicines in Europe by developing innovative methods. So this was actually the, the core of, the, uh, of the, the IMI call, the project, the, the objective. And we will do that by uh, enhancing early detection and assessment of adverse drug reactions from different data sources, clinical trials, spontaneous reporting, and observational studies. And also, we would like to enable the integration and presentation of data on benefits and risk. And when I say presentation, I mean visualization. So we will develop, and we have started doing that now, uh, graphical methods uh, that will allow really a visualization of uh, the benefit risk of medicines and also how the, the new data that are being published or that are being uh, 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 that are, uh, arrive from uh, clinical trials or other data source affect this, uh, this graphical representation of benefit risks. And we will apply these methods and test these methods in real life situations. 